Hey guys, welcome back. So today I am in the process of assembling a gigantic 3D printed golf ball. Um, and I'll do a whole video on this build soon, covering the uh, the 3D modeling steps and how I set up the print. And it's got like, you know, this, all this weird internal structure that I made. Um, but I today I'm putting it together and to a little backstory, I initially was going to print this in ABS. And the one good thing on ABS, one of my favorite things about ABS, is that you can chemically weld the parts together. So you can use acetone, and you basically brush the surfaces with acetone, and while it's still wet, you uh, would hold the parts together, and then a few minutes later, the acetone evaporates, and the parts become one. It's the actual plastic fuses together, and it's permanent, which is awesome it's one of my favorite things about abs one of my least favorite things about abs is it's really really fickle when you go to print it if there's anything a little wrong temperature wise it can warp and get really weird which is what was happening i was having tons of issues and now this is a, for a client they need this thing as soon as possible and i didn't have time to fiddle with it anymore so i ended up printing this out of pla um and usually when I print out a, with PLA, if I need to adhere parts, I will use like Zapagap, which is, uh, what is the main ingredient? It's uh, cy cyanoacrylate. Is that right? Cyanoacrylate, which is basically identical to super glue. Uh, a lot of those like Loctite uh, super glue, all those super glues use pretty much that same ingredient. When you have that as your main ingredient in the glue, you can use a kicker and it makes it go off really fast. So typically I use this, but I did not want to add the Zapagap to this because what happens is it is actually harder than the filament. So when you're sanding to do cleanup, sometimes where there's glue, it is harder to sand that down and it gets the surface gets hard to work with. So I wanted to weld this together somehow. And I'd seen people in the past use wood burners to weld pieces together. Another thing that could work too that I'm going to mention really quick is... Uh, one of those 3D printer pins. It's like a little filament print pin. Uh, that would probably do the same job, but I just don't have one of those. So um, something I might pick up in the future. But anyway, what I'm using is a soldering iron. And what I do is I pull the parts together. Let me tilt this down a little bit. I will put the parts together as closely as I can. Get it lined up to where I think they look decent. Make sure my stuff is close, and then I will uh, basically just tack the surface. I'm not doing like melting a, a huge amount, I'm just getting the surface softened up and a little bit stuck together. And while it's still sort of warm, you can position it the way you want and blow on it, and then uh, it cools down and solidifies back up very quickly and then now your pieces are sort of joined and you can trace this around and if you go real gentle you can do it without leaving much of a seam line and while it's warm you can actually kind of push it down with your finger um, so now these parts are I mean, it's, it's a weak weld. I should, I'm should. i going to go around all the seams and, and uh, make sure it's really strong. But now these parts are one piece. What's good about this is back to the, uh, back to the, uh, the whole thing with the sanding, is when I need to sand this, my little weld line is going to sand exactly like the rest of the part, which is really, really good. Um, this whole thing, once it's done, will probably be coated with the XTC 3D just to really even it out and sand it a bunch of times so it's got to look really smooth. Uh, another trick that you can do is you can take old filament pieces like scrap and you can use it to fill holes. So if you have any like uh, like little seam lines and so forth, you can put a little filament up against the seam like this. Break a piece off here. This piece is pretty flat. Put it right up against the seam and just real lightly cook it together and it'll fill in that gap and it, it works really well so um just a quick quick tip i will be assembling the rest of this thing that way so whenever i do the, the full build video you'll get to see this all done but i figured i'd share that really quick again you guys have probably seen that already before but it's my first time trying it and i'm 
pretty bummed at myself for not trying it sooner. But uh, anyway, hopefully it was helpful to somebody. We'll see, and uh, I will be back real soon. Talk to you guys in a minute.